Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Claire Alloway. I work at, on the marketing team here at Jobvite. Today we have this incredible presentation, Making Your Brand Magnetic with Your Career Site. So before I pass it over to Mason and my our two presenters today, I'm just going to go over the agenda um, and a couple of quick admin details. So first off, you'll notice all your lines are muted, and that's just to avoid background noise, but we would love your questions. Um, we're going to have a Q&A section at the end of the presentation with Mason and Mai. So you can see that Q&A box in the bottom left-hand side of your screen. Feel free to add in any questions throughout the presentation, at the end of the presentation, whenever your heart desires, um, and I will make sure to organize them and have the two presenters cover them at the end. The last thing I'll, um, I'll mention in admin is that yes, you will be getting the recording, and yes, you will be getting the slides, so no need to take crazy detailed notes. You'll get all of that to review later and hopefully pass on to some of your coworkers if you think this presentation is as good as I do. So today's agenda, it's pretty simple. We're going to set the stage. So just how do you set the stage in figuring out how to improve your brand, how to make your career site and your employment brand really connect? Getting the buy-in, which is a huge issue that I know my and Mason have heard on their end. Um, the typical project, what does that look like? My works day in and day out with a lot of Jobvite customers on these projects. And then the Q&A, like I mentioned before. Jobvite itself, I know we have some Jobvite customers on the line. Thank you specifically to all you guys, but also to everyone who was able to join. Um, in case you're not familiar, this is how we show everything that Jobvite does in one slide. So you can see on the left-hand side is the funnel, similar to what your colleagues in marketing do. This is the recruiting funnel. You can see the top of the funnel. That's the branding, the sourcing, everything before candidates become applicants. Um, or or passive candidates, all that stuff. The bottom of the funnel is the application, the qualification, all that stuff. Today, obviously, we'll be talking a little bit more about the top of funnel, and you can see our products that correlate with those pieces. Our, our job by brand, which is a key piece of what we're talking about today, the services um, and the skills that Mai's team works on to make your career sites look fantastic, the engage, which is our CRM sourcing function, job by refer is employee referrals, and then at the bottom of the funnel we've got job by hire, our ATS, job by video, which is video screening, and job by onboard, very clearly noted, our onboarding tool. With that, I am going to stop talking, and I'm going to pass it on to Mason to introduce himself. Thanks a lot, Claire. Hi, everyone. Uh, just to introduce myself, I've been a longtime repeat customer of Jobvite and really pleased to be here. Uh, earlier in my career, I've worked in HR. I've been a tech recruiter. I've been the head of talent acquisition for a handful of Bay Area tech companies. And uh, five years ago, I started ZWD, a consulting practice primarily helping Jobvite customers. Uh, in September of 2015, I began working with my client, Glue Mobile. Glue Mobile is a leading developer of free-to-play mobile games. Its current hit games are Design Home, Covet Fashion, MLB Tap Sports Baseball, Cooking Dash, and Deer Hunter, while Glue is probably best known for its celebrity games, Kim Kardashian Hollywood, and Restaurant Dash with Gordon Ramsay. And my. Hi, this is Mai Nakamura, and uh, yep, I've been at Jobvite for a pretty long time. It's been almost six years now, so I joined in 2011 as a uh, individual contributor, as a web developer, and then throughout the years there, um, I now manage the web development team, and I work uh, with every single brand customer to you know work with them on customizing their career site, and so some of those customers have been Zappos, Rosetta Stone, Home24, Universal Music Group, and also, too, most importantly, I am Meatloaf's uh, mom. So <laughs> Meatloaf is our job by top dog in, in the little picture that you see there. So that's, he belongs to me, and I do take care of him. <laughs> All right. So we're going to just start diving in there. And uh, let me see here. Let me go to the next slide here. And so what I wanted to talk about today is really, you know, helping kind of educate everyone how to get everything in order. And so, you know, developing 
a nice branded custom career site and having all the, the bits and pieces that um, are relevant to your company and you know good enough to entice um, job seekers to want to apply to your company it takes a lot of work and you know it does take a lot of people to also help and, and be on board as well so it's not just a one person show it's going to take a team to get your career site to the level that you want it to be so that you can start collecting really good talented people and so you know some of the things that you do have to gather a team uh, to help you uh, work on the on the branded career site because there's a lot of different components that um, you know that you have to come together uh, for your career site and so some of the people that um, you got to get the right people on board and so you know you have to get a lot of people in the different departments to buy in on why you need to have a nice branded career site um, also too you need to assess and figure out you know how does our career site look right now. What does the job seeker walk away with right now? And then just kind of assess and see what kind of things you can do to make it better, to expand on it. Um, you know, provide your job seekers information that they came for when they come to your career site. Um, so one of the examples that I wanted to talk about is our customer Ingram Micro. So they um, were good enough, nice enough to uh, be on my panel this year for R and L. And they got to share their story to the audience about what they did to get buy-in from the other teams. And so they also wanted to um, have the talent acquisition team be in control of the project because in the end you are, you know, the ones um, dealing with these candidates and, and all the, the talented people that come in through your pipeline. And so, and so Mason's going to talk a little bit about how to get to the root of it. Thanks, Sorry, Maya. Go ahead. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so I just wanted to start with a little story. When I joined Glue, um, I was asked to address a handful of different issues. Uh, one of those was the career site. Uh, everyone there pretty much recognized that the site was not very good looking. It was a bit uh, out of date, and it needed to be fixed. Uh, but but interestingly, despite the consensus that the site needed to be fixed, there was really a sense of the, the team not feeling empowered enough to start making a change. Uh, there had been mixed messages internally about whether it was really a priority to fix it. So when I came on board, uh, we definitely prioritized fixing the career site. Uh, there's a lot of good reasons for that. Uh, Glue is in a very competitive industry, the games industry. Uh, talent is uh, great talent for games is scarce, uh, and there's a lot of companies, especially in the San Francisco Bay Area, but around the world, uh, that are competing for talent. So we wanted to make sure uh, our career site uh, re reflected uh, the competitiveness of Clue. Uh, and one thing to note was uh, the, the older site wasn't even that good with uh, the mobile apply function. And I had just come off of a project with another client where we had implemented Jobvite brand. And Jobvite brand includes uh, all the latest uh, mobile-friendly tools to allow candidates to apply. So uh, with Glue Mobile being a company that has the name mobile in its name, we figured we'd better get the, rest, the right tools for uh, mobile apply for candidates. Uh, one of the things we did first up was to gain sufficient executive sponsorship, and so we uh, asked the head of HR, we asked the head of marketing, and uh, uh, we were pleasantly surprised to be given carte blanche as to the design of the site, and uh, we even asked if we could have the career site begin to look a little bit different from the rest of the corporate site, and uh, we were given the green light for that, so that was really great. Um, so just a glance at what the old site looked like, um, there was very few graphics. There was the one graphic you see there was actually already out of date. Uh, you can see on the individual uh, job posting page there was uh, not much going on there. So it was a bit of a mess and it was kind of drab. Uh, one of the first things we did was to gain buy-in from the recruiting team. And the, the method we did was uh, I asked, every member of the recruiting team to go find one or two other company career sites that they really liked. So they identified that and not only said this is a site they liked, but also identify one aspect of that site that uh, we could learn from. What is the one aspect of their either their user interface or some of their content 
uh, and uh, we gathered a lot of great ideas that way, and it helped improve um, the sense of involvement from the recruiting team. Uh, there were many ideas about uh, how to present the postings or whether should we should have a video or what kind of photos we should have. So that was a, a really great process. So one of the priorities was to identify uh, photos of employees. Uh, first of all, making sure that those employee photos didn't look like stock photos. A lot of sites look like that. We didn't want to look like that. We wanted to make sure that uh, people appeared to be having a uniquely great time. Uh, being a part of Glue. Uh, it took some time to go through a large volume of photos. We had found photos especially from company events and parties, and it turns out uh, we found photos of not only people having a great time, but there were group shots, uh, and also uh, uh, people from different offices at their respective parties. Uh, and some of those parties, they were even in costume, so that uh, worked out really great. We all wanted to make sure that uh, we were inclusive as to who was represented in those photos, and that meant, as I said, different offices, but also people from different functions, as well as different levels of the company. We ensured even that the CEO was included in the group shot. Another idea that came from the group was uh, we had existing links to the glass door page, uh, and there are benefits, of course, uh, there's a lot of uh, attraction to uh, glass door and people uh, assign a, a degree of validity to um, the reviews on Glassdoor. Maybe it's not absolute validity, but there's, there's a strong sense for that. So we wanted to make it easy to link to that. Uh, and also uh, pointing to Glue's career page on uh, the company page on LinkedIn. But even more so, uh, we found another company site that had a special link to LinkedIn that allowed the website viewer, when they clicked through, they were taken to a page where they immediately saw their connections to Glue employees or to that, that company's employees. We wanted to adopt that idea. So we were able to add a second link to LinkedIn that immediately showed the website uh, visitor their connections to Glue. And that way uh, it supported the employee referral program. So uh, what we result, the result of all the effort was a really fantastic site. We had, uh, you can see photos of uh, employees having a great time. Um, we had uh, someone propose the idea of a rotating carousel. Uh, so if you were to go to www.glue.com slash careers, you would see um, there's a rotating set of photos. Um, we have uh, concepts and values and uh, mentions of the locations there. So, uh, and, and my team was great in terms of executing the design, and we were really pleased that it was a hit. So, uh, finally, I want to mention that on our individual job posting pages, uh, we wanted to have graphical representations of different games. And since Glue's different locations were different uh, game studios building different games, we wanted the locations to correlate with the graphics on the page. So for any given job posting, if it correlated with a particular studio, we made sure that the game, one of the games that they had built was represented in the graphic. And um, my made it very easy to uh, set up a table so that certain graphics appeared on certain uh, job posting pages. Thanks, Mason. Okay, so you know when you get started on the job right career site, you have to ask yourself a lot of questions. Um, you know, what are what's the perception that your job seekers have of your company right now, based off of your current career site? You know, what do you want your applicants to learn about you once they come to your career site? Your website is kind of your first point of contact for a lot of your job seekers because they're going to come to your website, they're going to do their homework, and learn about what your company does. And then they're going to start browsing and looking at jobs. And so when they get to the, the career site section, you really want to tell your story and kind of um, build some character around your career site. So as a job seeker, I want to, you know, I want to make sure that I get all the information and I, and I know everything about the company based off of your career site. And so it's really good to have 
you know, important information that you really want to, um, you know, have your company represent. And so if you have some really important values that you want to highlight, you definitely have to have those on your career site. If you have some really interesting, cool perks and benefits that you want to highlight that separates you from other companies, you should definitely highlight that on your career site as well. Um, you know, and you want to be able to get everyone involved on your team. You guys can, uh, you know, give each other some feedback, brainstorm, really work as a collective team to figure out what you want on your career site and who should be involved. And, um, you know, compare yourself to other career sites too, regardless of if, if they are in the same uh, industry or not. It's always really good, like Mason um, just uh, suggested, that he looked at different career sites just to get an idea of what, other people are doing, what kind of features um, you know, they have on their career site, what kind of content they have on their career site. So it's always good to look at all the examples that we provide you and just kind of write down your likes and dislikes and then um, you know, take that back to the team and then start really uh, refining all of the items. All right. And so how do you get buy-in? And so when I work with our customers, a lot of the issues that I hear from our customers is getting buy-in from the other teams. And so, you know, it's really important to get everyone on board because it is a collective, you know, uh, team effort here. And this is, you know, your, this is your career site and you're trying to collect talent, um, the right talent for your company. And so how do you um, convince the bosses and so I always recommend to get the right appropriate team members uh, when we're kicking off this project. Someone, you know, maybe your CMO is uh, very important because you need the resources for marketing team to help you provide all the assets and imagery because they kind of control that. Um, the CIO is also important to get involved um, because you want to improve your application process and you want to make sure that it integrates uh, cohesively with your website. Um, also, too, the CEO, because the better your career site is, the better talent you're going to collect for your company. And I also suggest that you make sure you get everyone um, involved early in the project. Um, so head of recruiting and HR is, is um, obviously the execs that you want to get involved from the beginning because you want to make sure that they see the value of what you're working on. Also, um, IT head of security, you'll want to get involved because you want to make sure that the integration type that you select is going to uh, fit within their guidelines and make sure that, you know, it's going to work great on the website. So I've just got a brief story that reflects on gaining that executive buy-in. Uh, when I worked for another game company called Gree, um, we had really strong partnership from the marketing team. Um, they went so far as to uh, even put up a, a, a recruiting billboard up on Highway 101 in San Francisco. Uh, but the, the, and that's, uh, of course, a, a, not every company is going to do that. I think the more important lesson, though, is that the, the, the marketing leaders at that company had a really powerful perspective. Uh, they felt that their corporate brand and the marketing message and the audience for that completely overlapped with the recruiting brand and the recruiting audience. And so they uh, had no hesitation to provide uh, support, uh, creative resources, um, and to go so far as to put up a billboard and, and give us artwork for recruiting. Uh, and and that, that realization uh, and that level of support was invaluable. Uh, another example of what we did over at GRE, and, and again was in partnership with, with marketing, uh, and this is a little bit outside the scope of uh, career sites, but just really quickly, um, we created what was basically a talking points sheet for interviewers. And uh, this allowed uh, for uh, all the uh, interviewers throughout the organization to be able to speak about the company uh, in a relatively consistent manner. They were still encouraged to give their own unique perspective. Uh, but to be able to talk about the company, talk about the games, uh, talk about the message, and also describe things in a consistent way, we felt uh, would be the best way to present the company employment brand to candidates. Uh, and this wasn't uh, just uh, an electronic document, and it wasn't a flimsy 
printout. We actually printed it on a, a laminated uh, uh, sheet, and we distributed it, physically distributed it throughout the company. And we felt that even though it was meant for an internal audience, uh, if it ever kind of got out or a candidate ever saw it, it would actually be a good thing to have a perception that uh, we were organized and we had this great uh, message uh, that was spelled out. Another quick story I wanted to mention uh, was uh, when I was over at another company, uh, another job by customer, Advent. Um, Advent Enterprise Software Company, at the time, the product uh, management team uh, had adopted a formal validation process, and that was uh, new features for the software uh, would be discussed with customers, and customers would give feedback as to they like this idea, they like that idea, or they were even asked what they would pay for uh, those features. So it was a concept of validation so that then the product team could move forward and build features that the market really wanted. Uh, so when I was there at the with the recruiting team, we adopted the same concept when it came to developing an employment branding campaign. Uh, we happened to have a great uh, contract uh, graphic designer. Uh, we came up with uh, possible slogans and logos and graphics and so on. And we invited a sampling of employees to come in and, and uh, get their sense of which of these really resonate, which of these ring true. Uh, and in the end, we were able to roll out an employment branding campaign that included the, the career site, but other collateral as well. And we felt very confident that it, re it very keenly represented what the uh, employees felt uh, was valuable for working for the company. Okay. And so this past year at Oravel, um, for my session, I did a career site session, we had a group of panelists that got to kind of share their story uh, because, you know, a lot of our customers do, do often struggle to get the buy-in and get everyone on board and, and get all the team together to work on the career site. And so one of the common um, items that all three of my panelists had um, ex or kind of experienced and, and uh, shared was that they all provided metrics. And so they all went to the Google Analytics and really provided metrics, the bounce rate, the application conversion to the, the rest of the, the departments to say, hey, we really need to you know, redo our and con reconsider our career site because we're not getting a lot of applicants, we're getting a lot of drop-off rates. You know? And so getting the numbers um, definitely will help you. Um, you know, get everyone on board and say, okay, you know, we really do need to uh, revisit our career site. And also, too, with the brand services, it's an ongoing service. And so a lot of our customers, you know, when, we, when I have a kickoff call with them, they get a little overwhelmed because there is a lot, you know, to work with on this project because you have to figure out what you want. You, after you figure out what you want, you have to go and collect the assets collect all the bits and pieces, maybe revisit and rewrite your content, or maybe you even want to create a video for your recruitment team as well. And so, you know, this typically can take months. I've had career sites that we worked on for over the course of a year even because it just took so long for them to define what they want and then go and create all of the content. And so we can definitely work in phases, and a lot of our customers do because I'm sorry, some, uh, I think someone just left. But, um, you know, you want to make sure that you have everything on your career site and your career site is the best out there for your company and to represent your company. And so since it can take a long time, a lot of our customers will work in phases. And so for phase one, we can do a little bit more simplified version, but a really nice branded career site. Maybe it might not have all the content that you want to put on there because you have to go and create that additional content. Maybe you don't have you know, video testimonials from your employees because you have to go and create that content. And so we can definitely work in phases. And um, so for UMG, um, you know, they're a big global company and they have all different regions that were partaking in the career site. And so for UMG, we worked in phases. And so for phase one, you know, we did a really nice, um, really nice uh, career site that's a little bit more simple because they had really beautiful graphics that kind of uh, made the design. And then for phase two, we're going to, you know, expand on the content for each brand and we're going to add languages. 
And so you can definitely work in phases as it's an ongoing service. So the GLUE project also involved phases, and I wanted to briefly describe. At the beginning of the project, um, I was trying to emphasize more minimalist design, and really what I was going for was, let's keep the project simple and try to expedite getting it done. Um, when we did a first draft uh, of the site, um, you can see this version one here. Uh, we, you know, we had the, the, the photos selected, and we were relying on how uh, Java brand display, displays the listings. The, the team was actually not impressed, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, and an issue that hadn't been um, illuminated before uh, started to come up. So it turns out uh, this draft was relying on the existing color scheme of the corporate site. And as you remember, I, I mentioned earlier, the um, executives had given us carte blanche to do our own design. So I learned from other team members, and one of the particular team members stepped up to say, could they lead the creative design of the, of the revised site and absolutely let them run with it. So the lesson I learned was that Glue years ago uh, had uh, more emphasized games like first-person shooters and role-playing games and the tone of the site was to better match those kinds of games. Uh, but it left things kind of drab, and everything was this black and yellow scheme. Uh, and the rest of the team really wanted to have more vibrant colors. So uh, we can skip ahead to the next one. We can see the, the eventual design uh, included uh, many more colors and a, a lot more of a liveness to it. And then the, the rotating mechanism gave a kind of a physicality to, to the energy we wanted to convey. So, and, and even today, uh, the site continues to evolve um, as uh, new locations uh, open up or as uh, we want to revise the, the values of the business. Uh, and later on, the team is going to be working on conveying more about uh, benefits and perks. Uh, the, the site will definitely have its next phase. So we want to make sure that uh, as you proceed with your uh, career website revamp that you get everyone on the same page because ultimately uh, uh, if you have divergent viewpoints, you can slow the project down. And as my story uh, gave an example, um, you know, it wasn't not the initial direction was not necessarily what everyone wanted. But uh, in the end, your career site uh, should be reflective of the overall campaign that you're going to be pursuing with your employment brand. And uh, make sure that you have uh, uh, all your ducks in a row. Uh, make sure you have an insight as to you know, who your audience is and if you have an opportunity to look at uh, uh, website visitor metrics and such. Okay. And so how does that project look like? So when you um, are ready to start on branding your career site, uh, we'll schedule a kickoff call. And during the kickoff call, uh, we just ask that you bring in every stakeholder that is going to be involved, that is going to be making decisions uh, for your career site. So that's someone like a recruiter, um, you know, leading the team, um, someone from marketing team, someone from technical support. And those are all, you know, really important to get on board um, early in the project. And so on the kickoff call, um, you know, I'll give you a high-level overview of how the project process will go. And then um, I'll show you, a, you know, a handful of examples as well. And then I will also send you a handful of examples of all different variations of career sites that we've worked on. So that way you and your team can spend some time and, you know, really look at these examples and note and write down what you like about each one, what you, what you don't like about each one. And, you know, we ask for your guidance so that we can develop something that meets your expectation, but we need to know what you're envisioning in your your head and what you want on your career site. And then we're going to define the content. And so, you know, I will give you a bunch of homework. Um, I don't mean to give you homework, but, you know, I, I, we need you to tell us what you want on your career site. And so you have to go and figure out, you know, what kind of content that you uh, want on your career site that you already don't have. Maybe if you already have 
uh, content on your career site you might want to revisit. Maybe it's a little too wordy, and maybe you want to shorten it up, and maybe you want to put some more graphics in there. Maybe you want to divide up the content by icons too because, you know, a lot of our um, users these days, they really like images and videos and things like that. And so based off of um, all the items that I'll give you, you'll have to go and do your homework and you'll have to work as a group and maybe divide up the, the work as well. And maybe if it's going to be too much in phase one, maybe that's when you'll decide, okay, we really want this video, but that video is not going to be available now. Or maybe we really want you know, to highlight our perks and benefits, but that information isn't going to be available now. So that's when you'll have to decide we'll work in phases. And that's when you'll have to decide for phase one, you know, you'll like to go live with a nice branded career site and maybe just some content, and then for phase two, we'll go and expand on each of uh, the content. And maybe we want to build out team pages. You know, each team functions a little differently, and so maybe you want to tell a story about what t each team does. And so um, you can have nice images for uh, the team and a little summary about what each team does, and then you can have a nice uh, job listing that is specific to just that team. And so all of that takes time, and so we can definitely work in phases. And then what we'll do is once you um, go and gather all the requirements and all the bits and pieces, then you um, send it over to us, and then we'll review it, make sure everything is doable, make sure we understand your vision, and then we'll go put it into development. And the development time typically takes about three to four weeks, depending on how big your career site is going to be. And then we'll send you a review link. And based, um, when, when you have a review link, you'll have a chance to review it internally, you know, give us any edits, any feedback, and then we'll go through iterations. And then once you say, okay, it's done, we approve it, it looks great, then uh, you, can go, um, you can go live with your career site. So that's pretty simple. So with the whole entire project, um, outline, the part that takes the longest is, you know, defining what you want on your career site, and then, of course, going and gathering all those assets. So that part takes the longest. Once you figure that part out, then the development time goes the fastest, because we know everything, we have everything that you want on your career site, and we have, you know, all your notes of what you like, and then we just go and develop it. So I'm going to show you some examples here. Um, it's always great to show some before and after just so you can get an idea of what our customers had before and what they had after uh, with Job I Brand. And so on my screen here is uh, Ingr our customer Ingram Micro. They were on our um, RNL panel discussion, and so they got to share their story about how they went about uh, you know, revisiting their career site. So as you can see here, this is their culture page. So there's not a whole lot going on here except for text. It's very text heavy. Um, there's no icons. Um, it's pretty boring. I don't really get an understanding of how their culture is because it's just text. And Mai, could you give a little yeah. background as to who Ingram is? I think that might help. Yeah, Ingram Micro, they're actually a, a, a global company. And um, the, I actually don't know what, what they do, but, um, but yeah, they, they are a global company and they are, uh, you know, they had a hard time making a global presence. And so when they came to us for their career site, they really wanted to show off that they are in all different parts of the world and you know they wanted everyone to get an idea of how it's like what it's like to work at their company based off of their career site and so that's what i specifically worked with them on was making sure that their career site delivered a global presence as well so i'm going to show you um let's see here so this is what um, we came up with so with Ingram Micro, they um, had their own internal design resources. And that is definitely an option with all of our customers. So if you have your own designers at your company or if you're working with a third-party agency and you want to uh, uh, provide us with a specific design, you certainly can. Um, and then so we can schedule a call with the designer so that I can let them know what's doable. And from there, they would design their career site and then send it over to us so that we can do a final review just to make sure everything is doable, and then we'll develop it as is. And so that's the approach that Ingram Micro went with. 
Um, and this is uh, what they came up with. So I'm going to show you um, what this looks like. I'm going to share my screen here. Oh, let's see here. Share screen. Okay. Um, Claire, can you tell me if you can see my screen okay? Yes, we see it. Okay, great. So this is what we came up with. And so you can see here we have some really, really great graphics that are transitioning between multiple slides. So really nice graphic to capture your attention. We have a big headline here. As a job seeker, if I've already come to their career site and I know exactly where to go, I can just type in what I'm looking for and hit search and start my search immediately. Or I can go down further and just read more about the company. And so we have some video testimonials here. So if I click on this, um, it will automatically play on the career site. So I'm not taken to another separate site. And these videos are um, uploaded on YouTube as well. So it's free hosting for you guys. And so further down here, we have a call to action. So if I look, if I watch the videos and I'm ready to start searching, I can click on the join us button. We have this really cool um, numbers here that kind of talks about their global presence. And then Ingram Micro also has a lot of brands too. So they have a ton of brands here that they wanted to uh, display. Uh, they're just logos here. And there is also a way to search by brand as well. And here's another video too at the bottom. And so I'm going to go and I'm going to start searching. And so we have some search filters here to help narrow down the search. We have it by country, city, state and city, by category, or by brand, like the, brand, the logos that you saw. And we have some really cool uh, tiles here that are all um, divided up by categories. And so it shows you how many jobs are available in each category. So if I know that I fall into accounting and finance, I can click into there. And then we have 29 jobs available in here. I can apply now, I can apply, uh, or I can uh, sign up to receive job alerts. And if I click apply here, I'm taken to their EU compliance form, and I'm just gonna click accept here, and here is their apply page. So it's very simple, I just pick a selection here to upload my resume, here are the fields, and then I hit send application. Another thing about uh, Ingram Micro's career site is we have it available in multiple languages. So we have Chinese, uh, German, Dutch, French, Portuguese, and Spanish. So I can switch over to Chinese if I want to, and everything will be translated in that language. Another example I wanted to show you is, um, let me see here, let me stop. Actually, I don't know how to get back. Click on that green arrow and you'll go back to the presentation. Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay. okay. And then the next customer that I wanted to show was Universal Music Group. And so this is there um, before. And so, you know, when I first looked at their career site, I said, you guys have a lot of great, beautiful images, high quality images. And so I really, um, you know, felt good that we we're going to be able to provide them with a nice career site based off of those images. And so you can see you don't get a whole lot of information here because all the images kind of take uh, precedence over the career site. So it's just a little blurb. There's not a whole lot of character behind it. Um, and so what we did was we really used their images to kind of drive the design. Their career site is very simple and it's very easy to use, but their their images that they selected really tell a lot and they kind of bring out a lot more design to the simple career site. And so since they are global as well, we wanted to um, you know, have, have artists that belong to the certain um, regions as well. So I'll show you um, again the live version. Okay, so this is their main careers landing page. And so their um, slideshow here, um, it's a mix of all their artists from different parts of the world, just to, so that it gives a global presence. And from here, I can click on this little menu icon to go to the different sections to learn more about their company. I can go to uh, careers by brand. So these are all their different brands. And if I so click on one, 
it will take me to a job listing. If there were jobs open, it would display right here. And so I can either browse their listings through brands or I can go through um, the, the other items that's available. And so we have a little blurb here that talks about the company and we have a choose your territory. And so if I'm interested in United States, I can click into United States and here is where their global presence is displayed for each region. So all of these um, images are all under the US um, artist. And so we can, the user can click on these arrows to go through each one or it will automatically cycle through. And we have a mix of artist pictures as well as offices. So they want it to really kind of show off um, you know, the office that they, the job seeker would be working at too. And then underneath here, uh, we have a little description about each region, and then the listing is specific to just the U.S., so I'm not distracted by any of the other regions. I can go back here, and we can click on another one, and this, these uh, photos are all under Asia Pacific. And then the listing is just all under Asia Pacific as well. And so if I want to look by territory, I can, or I can choose by team. And so here we did this really fun little animated uh, record that spins when you hover over it. So this was really cool. Um, if I'm a job seeker and I don't know where I quite fall into, I have the search all button here. And this will give me all of their jobs that they have available. And then from here, I can narrow down my search by location. Or I can click into a team here and, uh, and view all their openings specific to just that team. Okay. And so now we have some time for Q&A. And so if you want to put your questions into the chat box. Perfect. Thanks, Mai, and thank you, Mason. Uh, so yeah, just as Mai just said, we have some time for Q&A. Um, so please feel free to type all of those in. We'll get to as many as we can, and, uh, and we'll close up whenever you guys are done. So to start us off, um, I have a question from Terry. Um, her company doesn't have a lot of, of images already set up, probably similar or unlike uh, what you worked with, my on Universal Music Group, where they had all those fantastic uh, photos. So how do you suggest mm -hmm. getting that imagery or getting, getting some, some visualizations of how incredible their companies are um, and making their site engaging when they don't have those ready-made images? Maya, you want to start us off with some ideas? Then we can go to me. Yes. So I always discourage using stock photos because, you know, everyone knows what stock photo looks like. However, it's important to have images on your career site. And so if you don't have, you know, real photos of your employees and real photos of your location uh, available at the time, uh, we, we have had customers use fo stock photos first for the meantime. And so they can at least get their new career site up and running. And then they'll take, um, you know, some time after the fact to you know, spend some time taking photos. So I had a customer that specifically hired a photographer to go around their office and take photos of the employees and photos of them doing, you know, working, collaborating, and even, uh, you know, around their office as well. And then once those photos are available, then you know you can come back to us and say, hey, we've got new photos to update our career site. Since it's an ongoing service, all of these changes in the future are included. And so you, you know, whenever you have those, those new photos available, you can just contact us and then we'll get those updated on your career site. And so that's where working in phases also comes into play because you know, if you don't have photos um, at the very beginning but you want a better career site um, as soon as possible, we can just you know, maybe select like one or two stock photos, just keep it very simple. And then um, after, when those, um, those real photos are available, we can go back and update it. I just want to add that at least one of the companies I've worked for, uh, it turned out one of the employees uh, had a professional camera and was very interested in, in contributing to the project. 
So uh, hiring a professional photographer is definitely one option, but you may be surprised who uh, in, within your own company uh, is happy to do that too. Um, we have a question from Jenko, and um, and they ask how um, if we have any numbers or maybe even some anecdotes. Because I don't know if we have stats um, at top of mind, but any any information on how an improved career site has reduced time to fill vacancies, or how it's enabled a candidate pool or pipeline um, to be improved or tapped into. So I don't have formal metrics, but I do have anecdotal feedback. Uh, at least uh, one candidate uh, at Glue has commented that they were pleasantly surprised how fast they were able to apply uh, using the, the job by brand functionality and uh, minimizing the number of data fields that we collect. So we've gotten that anecdotal feedback. Yes, and also too, um, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, Mike. So I just wanted to add that um, you know not everyone is aware of this, but if your company has their own Google Analytics, you uh, can definitely send that uh, analytics script over to us, and we can place it on your job site career site. So then you can start collecting some analytics, and put and that information will go into your own Google Analytics account. Also, too, on the job bite side, we collect analytics on all of our career sites, and that data goes into your job bite account under reports. Uh, there is a career site tab, and um, on that tab, uh, it will collect all the information of where users are coming from, what devices they're coming from, which requisitions they're visiting most, uh, which requisitions they're applying to most. Um, so we've got some pretty good information in there. Um, that you can share with the rest of your team. And if you go into your job ed account and you don't see the career site tab, please let us know. Please file a ticket or call our support line so that we can get that enabled for your account. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to move on to a question that uh, has a larger scope than the rest of them, so I think it will be interesting to hear. Um, possibly just from, from Mason, because it is more of a recruiting consultant qu question. Um, but she asks, which is more important, getting your website up to date with better branding or getting a better application or ATS system? And in her case, they're not using an ATS, so they have a long application inserted into their website by their web developer. Her fear is that if you improve your branding first, they might get really excited and then get to the application and leave because it's too long, or mm -hmm. they never end up at the application because your site isn't exciting or isn't branded well. Nathan, can you start us off? Yeah, so the, I mean, the quick answer is both are important, but if push, push came to shove in terms of prioritizing one over the other, uh, I mean, you have to think from a candidate experience perspective, um, you certainly want a positive career site to attract and so on, but if they do hit a long and arduous application uh, online, uh, there's going to be a big drop off rate. And uh, I would consider uh, having a proper application process, whether it's an ATS or some other system, uh, to keep that as easy and simple as possible. Uh, again, as I mentioned, uh, when, when we've set up Job by Brand at Glue and when I've done it at other companies as well, uh, the anecdotal feedback is uh, people are much happier to uh, apply with as few data, required data fields as possible. Mai, did you have some thoughts, or do you want me to move on? Yes, yeah, so to piggyback off of what Mason said, it's, I think it's very important to have an easy uh, application process. And so, you know, not having to have your job seekers create an account just to apply to one of your jobs is really, really important because you'll get a lot of drop off right there. Uh, because they want they're when they're looking for jobs, they're applying to a ton of jobs, and so you don't want them to require to you know create an account just to apply to a job. Um, and we want to make it as easy as possible. So you want to ask you know some really really important questions in the beginning, but but keep it very simple and minimal so that you capture their resume and their information, and then from there, if you need to collect additional information, then you can collect uh, collect that from them after you get that you've received their uh, resume. Yeah, that's a great point. And we had some 
someone, a participant, which is great, chime in as well, Keegan. Um, he said, pick your ATS before your career site, as most ATS will have some sort of limitations on your website implementation. That's a great point. And even you know, having Maya on this webinar, if you do choose an ATS like Jobbyte, obviously we'd love it, but a lot of ATSs like us have a product or service like Jobbyte brand where we'll help you put in the career site, put in the work and the imagery and everything like that. Um, so to everyone's point, I think um, both are important, but an ATS may set you up for a stronger structure than going the other way around. Okay, um, so Karen had a question as well, similar to um, to Jenko's, on what is the return on a career's website re redesign in terms of number of applications, increased traffic to your website, et cetera? So I'll address that first. So uh, Karen, while I, again, I don't have formal metrics to respond directly, I can say that uh, in terms of a sense of pride and a sense of morale amongst the recruiting team, amongst hiring managers, having a great career site uh, is a very, very strong return on investment. Um, and, you know, even now uh, at Glue, people talk about how great of a career site it is. The, the corporate site is actually still to catch up. Uh, Glue is looking forward to um, uh, refreshing that soon. Uh, but we still uh, have people t speaking with pride about how great our career site is. Great. So it looks like um, we have one more question, um, and then if no one else has any more questions, I'll I'll end the webinar. But if you so we do have a little bit more time if you've been pondering something that you want to ask Mason and my, definitely type that in real quick and we can get to it. But so unless that happens, our last question. So do you guys have any tips on getting executive buy-in? Mason, you told a story before about um, getting some employee buying buy-in at Advent, and I know my a number of, of past customers and current customers have uh, overcome this hurdle too. So, do you have any stories and examples that may help some people on the on the line with that? Hi, uh, you want to go first? Sure. This, yeah, um, yeah. I just wanted to reiterate. Uh, you know, a lot of our customers that w that were able to get buy-in, they did provide their executives, you know, some metrics and data, and so that's where the Google Analytics comes in to really help you um, build your story and and get buy-in from, from everyone and say, hey, look, this is, this is the data that we have. We have, we have a lot of drop-off rates. We're, we're not getting a lot of visitors. Our traffic's really low. You know, that, that data there alone will help, uh, you know, convince everyone like, hey, okay, we do need to revisit our career site. We need to make it better and make it more exciting and, and so that we'll get more traction. Our customers, uh, Ingram Micro and Universal Music Group, and one other, one other customer that was on my panel, Bellron Canada, all three of them provided metrics to um, the executives to say, hey, we really need to revisit the career site. And, and luckily, uh, they all had a really uh, you know, uh, easy time getting buy-in from everyone. Everyone was on board after they reviewed the analytics. So my two quick tips, one is kind of more ideal, one is more practical. Uh, from an ideal sense, you know, hopefully the executive team has already bought into the concept that recruiting should be a strategic initiative. It should be one of the key goals of the company to attract talent. Uh, the, the overall management concept of human capital has been uh, elevated over the years. So appealing to that is one approach. But the more practical one is a, a little bit like what we did at Glue. Identify competing companies and their sites and show how great they are. And you'll find that a lot of executives themselves are competitive and they don't want to be outshone by the competition and they don't want to lose talent mm -hmm. to the competition. So I, I would do that. Yeah. I can invest at least our executive team has got some competitive spirit. I'm sure that would get them get them moving <laughs> quickly. Cool. Right. Okay. And so, that is actually 
Go ahead, Mike. Sorry, I just wanted to say, I just want to say one thing. That is actually something that I hear often as well, and say, oh, you know. Uh, customers that come to us and they're ready to work on their career site, they've done their homework and they've looked at their competitors and look at what they have. And so, you know, they get competitive and they're like, we want something better than this. So that's something that's definitely important as well. Awesome. Okay, so we've got five minutes left until the top of the hour. Thank you everyone for joining us. Obviously, thank you to Mason um, for coming in during his day and then Mai as well for presenting some incredible examples and all the work that you and your team has done. It's pretty awesome. Uh, so thanks, everyone. Once again, the presentation deck and recording will be in your inbox by tomorrow morning. And hope everyone has a fantastic day. Bye. Yay.